Welcome to Where You Live for the month of June. I'm Mary Ruth Harris, and we are in Powell River, and I could not be happier about it. Sunny Powell River, it is absolutely spectacular here, and I am sitting in the middle, well, almost in the middle, of the brand new library that is opening very, very soon, and joining me for a very quick chat is the chief librarian, Mr. Terry Nero. Hi. Well, Ruth, we're having a heavy year in Powell River, and now you know why we're the Sunshine Coast. <laughs> I know, right? I, we've been following this project since the beginning. Wow! Looks a little different now, doesn't it, last well, time you were it's here? it's so great. Like, the columns, the wood columns, are just spectacular. It's the, one of the first things I noticed when you brought us in way back when you guys first won the yes vote for renovating the library and the space, and it's just magnificent. Yeah, we're real happy how it came out, and we're real happy to be able to carry the uh, history of the building forward. So it mm -hmm. still looks like it did when uh, it was a uh, Hudson Bay store yes. 50 years ago. Now, one of the things that I noticed first was the lights. They're so small. Yeah, the new LED lights are great. It's so about 10% the power consumption, yeah. and they don't block up the whole ceiling with kind of these, uh, what I think would be ugly fixtures. So they kind of disappear. <laughs> They do. Into they the they almost look like, in from a distance, they almost look like they're just floating there because the the silver and the gray of the, I guess, the chains that are holding them just kind of blend into the background, and it really gives this kind of, you know, very modern, futuristic, but yet very grounded with all the wood. Yeah, we're really happy the kind of contrast with the wood in the original view, and the kind of industrial view that the ceiling brings forward in the right. building, which allowed us to keep the space bigger without yes. putting a ceiling in, uh, yeah. saved money. And well, then why cover up those beautiful beams? We really love the look and how it turns out here. So it turned out a uh, win all the way across for us in terms of how it looks. Now, when do you get to start moving in books? June 12th, we're gonna close the library, the current library, and we'll spend two weeks moving. We gotta pack our stuff and we have to disassemble. We are moving desks from the old library here. Mm -hmm. Those have to move in, and then on the 15th, we'll start moving books. Awesome. You must be so excited. We're really excited. Although one of my um, bosses at one time, we've been planning for a long time, mm -hmm. one of my bosses at one time said the really biggest problem with plans is it always degenerates into work. And right now, it's gotten real for me, and so we're starting to look at how much work there is to do over the next six weeks. Right. Now, when I think about the the library where you where like the old library and the and the space and then i come here it's just like how what's the difference in the space between wh what you had and what you're going to have the total floor space is about three times a little more than three times larger here which moves wow. us into a real good place in terms of comparables in the province right but effectively it's larger because the current library is cut up into a lot of little pieces right so we really have more space for staff than we need but there's no way to utilize to, it so right. I suspect from a, a usable point that we're probably four times as much space for programs and activities in the library oh, fabulous now, have you guys been dreaming up new programs and activities now that you have the space to support that? We've been starting to look in how it's gonna change. We have some areas, like we have our own meeting rooms. That's gonna make a lot more efficient for offering programs, because right. we have no meeting space in the current mm -hmm. library. Right. So all programs we do have to be outside the library. Staff has to find a space, arrange for it, rent it, right. move all their stuff, move it back. And so now we're thinking about different kinds of activities. Uh, over here um, is the maker space, which will have be able to put more technology in. And so we've been awesome. coordinating with the uh, Powell River Maker Space, uh, which is a new co-op that started up, about now, what we can provide. And I also see a whole line way, way, way at the other end of the building. Yes. I see a line of outlets across the wall. That's the technology. That's where the that's where going to be public computers, computers are. Okay. Fantastic. And then in this beautiful, bright, sunny corner, um, this is going to be the children's space? This will be the children's space. And the beam right in front that you can't see on camera, but it's going to be surrounded by a cedar log with branches coming out and uh, cut oh, 
cool. aluminum uh, bows that are powder coated. I saw yeah. the test fit of it last week, and it's going to be gorgeous and really striking. Oh, that's fabulous. And so story time right over in that area, and uh, area for families with some tables and right. kids' literature over on this side. So and nice big space for kids. Along the windows. All along the windows is lounge. Lounge. Area. Lounge. So, lounge. So when you come in and buy your coffee and come and sit and talk to your friends. It makes me want to move here. <laughs> We're happy to have you move here. We've got a real boon in terms of number of people moving to Powell River has grown greatly. Yes. So. Now, and the coffee, tell us about that. That's a really unique pa partnership. Yeah, so we're partnering with uh, PREP, which is the Powell River Employment Program, and okay. they're going to run the coffee shop, and they're running as a social venture, so set up so they can help people gain work experience and work through with the coffee. So we're happy about that, and I think that will be a great addition. Now, is there going to be addition. food as well, or just drinks? There'll be some food, okay. uh, muffins, muffins and that and kind of... Muffins and cookies and stuff like that, okay. Yeah, to All move right. up to prepare food moves you into a commercial kitchen. Right. I like the idea of being able to come and enjoy, you know, a coffee and a muffin while I'm reading my book or my magazine or whatever. Yeah, that's the idea. The libraries okay. have become a very social yes. environment all over. And we have some of that, but quite with 18 chairs and the public chairs in the entire space today. Wow. And how many, are in the, how many cha actual lounge chairs we have in the new space here? There'll be um, 25 lounge chairs, and the total chairs in this area will be about 100. Want to get with work tables and computer workspace. Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> that is just fantastic. Now, what is your favorite thing about this new space? I think the is the opportunity for community so okay. that we can do more events here. We have three meeting rooms and so we can we we do a good job of delivering access to materials. Yes. Um, today, but we can't do anything about programming that involves creating a sense of community in what some call the community living room or academically right. they call the third space, so another yeah. space where the community comes together. Okay. Well, Terry, thank you so very much for giving us a sneak peek of the new space. This is so very exciting. I really appreciate your time today. Okay. Thank you for coming over and look forward to seeing you when we're actually moved in. I know. We'll be back in a couple of months. You've been watching Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We will be right back after this break. Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We have left the glorious new library here in Powell River, and we've arrived at the offices of PRISMA, the Pacific Region International Summer Music Academy Festival. And joining me is Michelle, the Executive Director. Michelle, you're celebrating five years. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. It just went like that. Well, sure. <laughs> For us, anyway. <laughs> it's the timing is so uh, prevalent to me because I was pregnant for the first festival and I gave birth to my daughter about two weeks after so I oh. it's you know as Prisma grows it's you see it happening yeah <laughs> <laughs> and what is your strongest memory over the last five years what stands out oh my gosh um, the music is pretty amazing and there are mm. certain pieces like Different pieces affect people in different ways and um, just, you know, there's a lot of hustle and bustle when you're putting on a festival, but there are certain pieces of music where you just stop and you're very present. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to have that experience with hundreds of other people, whether yes. it's at the beach or in the Evergreen Theatre. It's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty exciting times. And also, during the two weeks, you're getting to know the students on the stage, so being able to see their faces, right. that, that makes it that much more powerful. One of the things that stands out for me is the collaboration mm -hmm. um, of composing new music. I think last year it was Tobin Stokes who mm -hmm. collaborated with Drew Blaney. Drew Blaney. Kes Paul. That's yes. It was, yes. Mm -hmm. That was extraordinary. We happened to be there, mm -hmm. uh, John McKenzie and I, mm -hmm. at the Willingdon Beach performance of that and it was just phenomenal. Yeah, I turned to a woman next to me who I didn't know, and I just said, this is history. Like, we are experiencing history because it was new music from this place. Um, it was very special. And I will say that we're going to play some of that music with the new orchestra 
at Prisma on the Beach this year. So okay. that'll be great. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. For those in our audience who don't know what Prisma is, can you explain it to us in one short sentence? Sure. Uh, <laughs> one way that someone uh, described it to me recently is that it's actually a number of festivals all at the same time, a number of events. So you've got the Academy where we've got about 70 to 80 music students from all over the world coming to Powell River to learn how to work together in an orchestra, along with 20 guest artists, again, internationally known uh, artists that are teaching as well as playing. So there's the Academy, and then there's the uh, Evergreen Theatre Concert Series. So that's uh, five concerts um, that people can buy tickets for or passes for um, at the Recreation Complex. There's Prisma on the Beach, which is this huge event. This year we're celebrating Canada's 150th. And, uh, and meanwhile, there's other smaller things going on, the concerto competition, there's the master classes that are open in the afternoons, and uh, okay. lots of opportunities to, to experience the music during the festival. I think the whole premise of bringing young musicians, and they're all predominantly young, are they not? Mm -hmm. Like late teens, early 20s? Uh, yeah, okay. university college age generally. It's an extraordinary experience for them to come to a foreign country, to this wee little place, Powell <laughs> River, mm -hmm. on the Sunshine Coast of Canada, and to be involved in such an amazing collaboration mm -hmm. of like-minded individuals, individuals with that passion for mm -hmm. music, whether they're a violinist or a cellist, or, mm -hmm. but everybody's coming together. and. What Arthur Arnold, your, mm -hmm. your conductor, is able to do with them in mm -hmm. such a short time mm -hmm. is shocking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons that our closing concert is so popular and pretty much a sellout every year is because they've had two weeks to really gel. And it's not a lot of time, but it's very intense. So mm -hmm. every morning the orchestra is rehearsing. There's lessons in the afternoon. They're able to see... Uh, their colleagues in their master classes and so forth. So there's so many opportunities for them to learn and grow. And then, uh, you know, you'll hear often at the hotel, someone's playing their flute at 10 at night because they're just so passionate. And on top of that, you've got the concerto competition. So you'll have individuals that not only are there to learn and gel as a team, but they want to st stand out as individuals. And that's right. a chance for them to compete and uh, to learn to be sol soloists. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, are all of the musicians billeted? Not all the musicians. The majority Some. of them will stay at the Town Centre Hotel, one of our oh, sponsors, okay. and they can walk back and forth to the theatre. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. What are you doing different for this year? Because it is five years. Are, mm -hmm. you, are you having a little celebration marking that fifth year anniversary? Well, we're going to have uh, a new kind of additional concert, which we haven't announced yet, so this is getting uh, very exciting. It's called Raven Tales, and it's going to oh. be a chamber music concert all, with all uh, BC music, uh, pardon me, BC composers featured. Wow. And so that'll have a different format, and that'll be more modern music, so that'll be exciting for our audience to try something new. Uh, we've got Canada cool. 150 on the beach, so mm -hmm. just a coincidence that Prisma's anniversary is on the same anniversary as Canada, as a regional district, uh, there's, there's lots of things to celebrate. Right. Um, that will be the regional event celebrating Canada 150. Okay. Uh, we've got chocolate bars on sale. They've got a, you open up the bars, they're just five bucks each, and they've got a chronology of the events. Also in our program, we're going to have a history oh, of the five years. And I, you know, I'm partial, but I think the history of how Prisma began and what's kept it going and what's allowed it to grow is, is really unique and special and inspiring, really. Now, you mentioned growth. Mm -hmm. What's on the horizon? Well, we are uh, eagerly anticipating a, a grant announcement that would allow us to uh, grow to three weeks next year. And uh, so that's a possibility. We're sort of uh, you know, waiting to find, find the news on that, and, and then we can figure out how to, how to make that happen. Um, we have a wonderful uh, scholarship program now called the Musical Merit Scholarship Fund where certain individuals uh, pledge to donate for five years a certain amount of money or, okay. or above uh, and that all goes to the students and uh, that allows us to bring in the best students to reward them for playing for the Powell River audience and, okay. and it's a competitive field out there so very, the very top students um, they have other options, and so mm -hmm. we want to make sure that Prisma's uh, on their radar and then that we can compete to bring them here. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that sounds all very exciting. Mm. I just am so thrilled that Prisma is really um, established now mm -hmm. and growing, and it's such an amazing mm -hmm. um, event. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for your time today. And you've been watching Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are in Powell River. We will be back. You're watching Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We've made the trip over to Powell River today, and the trip to Powell River would not be complete without a little side trip to the beautiful Lund. It is only 20 minutes up the road from Powell River and well worth it. Even just being here for a wee hour and you feel like you've been on holiday for a month. It is so relaxing. The scenery absolutely serene and spectacular, all in one glance. Definitely worth the trip. Of course, you have Nancy's Bakery here and the Lund Hotel and a couple of different eatery places to choose from. And there is a gallery that has a multitude of local artists represented. It is absolutely a fantastic way to spend a weekend away. You're watching Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. You're watching Where You Live. We are still in Powell River. My name is Mary Ruth Harris. Joining me now is the very lovely Lee McKenzie, who has written of her true story, which is unbelievable, The Charming Predator. And she's just returned from a book tour. I can't even begin to even think of what the first question might be. So what prompted you to write the book? Let's start there. You know, I did it on a dare, Mary Ruth. Really? Yes. I had buried in the storage room downstairs all of the pieces of paper and memorabilia that I had related to my marriage to this man. Okay. I married him in 1982. Mm -hmm. uh, everything crashed and burned within a year after. Okay. So with all the heartache and the dramas, everything went into a storage box and was hidden away. Oh, and then okay. many years later, came to me to wonder again what this man was up to. Mm -hmm. It led me to a, another person who was writing a blog about news events in Portugal. This is our global village now. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> who I corresponded with a bit and in a way I like to say he double dog dared me to write my story and I thought oh. how do you write a book? How does one write a book? And I thought that's a creative challenge I'll give it a try. Right. After I had started to write the book, all the other realities and ripple effects started to kick in. But the beginning was really a dare. You know, it, there's so many people that have been talking about this online. I've been following on Facebook, mm -hmm. and it's hundreds and hundreds that are mm -hmm. commenting on the book and watching the interviews that you've done you know, across the country and now around the world, you were mm -hmm. just mentioning. It's shocking to think that one individual could wreak so much havoc in one's life. And it's also surprising to me how many people have echoes of this same story either in their life or in the life of someone very close to them, a family member or a friend. I rarely have gone anywhere now in this book tour or even in my own circle of friends or where I work where someone doesn't quietly come up to me and say, this is my story too. Mm. And I think the reason that these hidden stories are starting to be said and told is that somebody needs to go first. And if somebody says, okay. I've had this happen and I was humiliated and I had to face my own role in it and take responsibility for that and then find a way to heal and have peace, when they hear somebody else say that, they have the courage to speak also and to look in their storage box. Okay. If you saw him today face to face because you don't know where he is mm. on the planet, what would you say to him? I would love to meet him, but not for any reasons of apology, reconciliation, or explanations for the things that happened. I'd just like to see what he says, if anything. I have things that belong to him 
that were in that storage box mm. that really should be returned. Now, see, one of the only reasons the storage box never got thrown on the fire, okay. thankfully, because now I've been able, I've been able to make use of it. Mm -hmm. But I'd love to just see what he said. And the interesting thing about that, I think, is that whatever comes of it, I would write, and then you, as a reader, would already have the measure of the man, and you could see what he says, and you could judge for yourself. Right. Is he telling me the truth? Is it another pack of lies? Mm -hmm. Or does he say nothing and just go? So it'll be very interesting if he's ever found, mm -hmm. um, and the trail of devastation that he's left mm -hmm. in his wake, um, what does eventually happen to him. So I do hope that somebody finds him somewhere and brings him to justice for all of the um, injustices he's done on other people. So. I, I agree with you, and I think the way where I've come to is I'm not without compassion for the fact that this is a damaged individual. Okay. But that doesn't excuse the choices that that person then makes when they damage and hurt others. Right. Okay. Well, Lee, thank you so much for chatting about the book. It is called The Charming Predator by Lee McKenzie. And we are going to take a short break from where you live, and we will be right back to talk about the upcoming Powell River Studio Art Tour. Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are in Powell River with Lee McKenzie. We have just finished discussing her book, The Charming Predator. But now we are going to talk about her amazing art. As you can see, it's all through this room and it is just lovely. Where do your ideas come? Everything is so different. There isn't one style. I wish that you could tell me. <laughs> Sometimes I stand in front of the easel with a new fresh canvas and I almost feel like there's seven artists standing behind me and I say, well, who wants to paint today? <laughs> because all kinds of things just come out. I love to experiment. Okay. I love to try different, uh, di not just different image ideas, but different materials, watercolor, mm. acrylic, mixed mm. media pieces, pieces that have fabric in them, or rice paper, oh. uh, found objects. Okay. I play. Awesome. Now, the studio tour is coming up the end of August, the 26th and 27th. And we've had a privilege in the past, just like we are today, visiting an artist in their studio. And it is so great to get that sneak peek behind the scenes of what the artist is living in and what they're working in. I would say that's why people should come. What do you think? I think that you've hit the nail on the head. We live in a world where many things are either computer generated or mass produced. Mm. And I think, in a way, we kind of crave something that's got the human touch. Oh, and when you come to right. an artist's studio, like when you come to visit me, mm -hmm. I take you around, I make you touch, I don't make you, I invite <laughs> you. When you come to my studio, I invite you to touch the paintings, okay. I show you the materials I work with, I get you to feel the papers and hold oh, the brushes, right. and you get a little connection yes. with the process and with the artist. And then okay. when you take that piece home, you're not just looking at something on the wall, you're carrying with it your memory of your visit here and the real right. human process that went into it. Right. Excellent. Okay, so when is the art tour? August 26, 27th, okay. as you say. The hours are 10, 10. to 5. Okay. Sat so it's Saturday, Sunday, okay. 10 to 5, and the doors are open. By the way, many of us look forward to this all year round. Mm -hmm. I love to have people come to the studio. I love it so much that I make my very special homemade oatmeal raisin cookies. Oh. They will be waiting for you. <laughs> All right. You've been watching Where You Live. Lee, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We have been here in Powell River for this edition of Where You Live for the month of June. Be sure to put August 26th and 27th on your calendar. The studio tour is spectacular. On the website you see on the screen, you will find a link to every single artist that's included in the tour, a map to their house and studio. It really is a great way to spend a weekend. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon.